I'm I'm, uh, I'm recording this call. This is a Generative Commons call on Wednesday, May 26, 2021. Um, and we'll put this call in the Generative Commons just to begin things on the right foot. Um, who would like to pick up and explain where we are? I'm happy to as well, but Vincent, maybe, you maybe we should go around and, and do introductions or something. Um, I all of us know each other except uh, hi David it's nice to meet you um, so David probably doesn't know us and we probably don't know David that sounds correct I'm, I'm wondering um, to add on to that if we can introduce ourselves and maybe give a sense or two of why we're here which could serve as a mini intro to the generative comments Michael awesome and Lauren is on her way as well oh fabulous okay <laughs> we're just starting a, a round of intros uh, and then, uh, and then we'll start to talk about why we're here. So I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. Let's let's wait for Lauren. Uh, oh, okay. She's gonna be here. Well, Lauren knows the rest of us. Um, okay, fair enough. But it's good for her to hear. I think it's good for all of us yeah. to do the same things oh, together. Okay. All right. I agree. Um, then shall we whistle a tune for a little while until Lauren shows up? Well, I can report that we had a twenty degree temperature swing in Minnesota. I mean, the highs the last couple of days were seventy eight to eighty. And the high today is going to be like 64. Oh, nice. So, brisk. So I don't need to worry about the AC working today. <laughs> Just open a window or door. <laughs> Amazing. And there's Lauren. Yay. Yay. <clears throat> Hi, Lauren. One of the sweet. <laughs> okay. We had a rest I'm feeling your that wasn't Lauren. <laughs> <clears throat> Here we go. Um, oh, cool. Oh, turquoise, is turquoise. welcome. Turquoise. Good morning. Cool. So we're just going to do a little round of intros um, because now we have several people who don't know everybody and several everybody's who don't know people and all of that. So <clears throat> um, I, I'm like, wait, how do I introduce myself? So uh, I'm Jerry Mikulski. I used to be a tech industry trends analyst. Uh, two things whacked me on the head uh, in, during that time back in the 90s. Uh, one was this mind mapping tool called The Brain, which I still use and is now the world's largest man-made brain. Uh, you can see it at jerrysbrain.com. And the other is I didn't like the word consumer. And that led me to discover that my word really was trust and that we had, by consumerizing our world and many other forces, we had basically broken trust in many different ways. So I'm sort of an investigator into trust. Um, the, a combination of those forces and some interesting conversations led to the birth of Open Global Mind, which is kind of one of the magnets that has us here in this conversation. And as part of the development of Open Global Mind, we had a conversation about intellectual property, which led to the birth of this generative commons thing. But I'm skipping ahead a little too far. But but it does say, Pete does say, why are, why are you here talking about generative commons? And, and so I have a, a, a deep and pervasive love of like, good ideas and helping people helping make good ideas more accessible so that we might actually act on them uh, as a civilization and unfortunately a civilization doesn't act as a whole it's always in little tiny little tiny units uh, so so we sort of walk into the world that way um, so let me pass the baton to Michael hi I'm Michael Grossman and uh, I come out of um, the world of, of media and content, um, where I spent most of my time um, as a designer and editor of magazines and helping um, legacy media brands into the world of digital in the last uh, 20 years, um, particularly. And um, I am um, running a platform, a uh, nascent platform called Factor, um, and my interest in facilitating people's sharing of information in a trustworthy way, in a way that gives them control of their information um, is one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm glossing over a transition actually from the democratization of information in the, the post publishing um, age, which is a great thing, but also a terrible thing. And um, we're just trying to 
along with a lot of other people, which is why I'm here in the um, generative commons conversation, figure out ways for people to build trustworthy infrastructure um, that helps, helps people both control information and trust information. Thanks, Michael. Um, oh, and uh, I'll pass it to you. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Joe. <laughs> per year. No, I was gonna, I was gonna, no, 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 you, you, you were just about to pass it. I'm like, perfect. Go ahead, go right ahead. Uh, okay. I'll pass it to Vincent. Hi everyone. My name is Vincent. Um, I've been for the last few years working on answering questions such as how can we help people find their path to creating impact um, how can we help people figure out what's going on and how they can get involved? Um, and more recently, how can we encourage and incentivize people to collaborate and work together to solve pressing problems like climate change instead of having lots of duplicate, uh, du duplicitous efforts that um, are not looking at the root causes and not trying to come together to actually solve the, the root of the issues. Um, and so that's led me to start working on a few different projects um, leading up to the current project called Trove. And um, I think one of the, the most interesting struggles for me has been in the legal context um, of trying to find this balance between wanting to protect information and simultaneously wanting to share information. Um, and so how, how do we you know, kind of rewrite the rules of intellectual property and trademarks and the sort of social agreements, but also the legal agreements that we have in order to um, be able to find that balance where we can protect um, our valuable ideas and projects from being kind of taken without people giving back. But in the case where there is that two way relationship with other platforms, with other communities where we are kind of, you know, having this loose reciprocity and helping each other sharing information back and forth. In that context, you don't want to close people out and have walls and so that people can't access the, you know, knowledge and the amazing things that you put into the world. So um, that's kind of what, what brings me here to talk about the generative commons. Um, and I'll pass it to uh, David, who I invited. Good morning. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, my name's David. Um, I, I've known about some of you for a while. I, I followed Jerry's brain, so I, I'm familiar with that. Also know Bill Anderson. I've uh, worked with Bill Anderson and John Lepkowski a long number of years ago. So you guys, I know y'all probably know Bill. I've, in fact, I've seen y'all kind of interacting. So um, what draws me, and I know Vincent as well, Vincent uh, and I have been talking with Kylie, so we've had little side conversations. So I'm, I'm in this space, I'm kind of paying attention and been paying attention for a while. Um, I'll say that, that my introduction to it a long time ago was something I worked for uh, Vignette, which was a large content management company back in the day. And at the time I was there, I was like, we're going to need a context management system. And I don't know what that looks like. Um, and much of what we're looking at now starts to fulfill what I had envisioned as a context management system, some way to do, I'll name something. If y'all aren't familiar with John Verveke, I recommend checking him out. Some of the cognitive scientists are doing some really interesting work. And specifically, John's notion, or John presents the notion of relevance realization. How do we filter out the, in, the un, unnecessary and, and separate the signal from noise in a frame while still maintaining the ability to break frame when necessary? It's a really powerful notion um, and beautiful to think about this. Also really en enthralled with the Jerry's focus on trust. I'm working on a book called Trust is a Technology, paying attention to um, the distinctions between um, internal authority, external authority, and that balance line. How do I tell that? And I think that also involves and revolves around the notion of relevance realization in that meaningful way. So that's me in a very small nutshell. <laughs> and I will pass it on to Joseph. Uh, right. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm um, Joe. I am in Oxford, UK right now, where I work as a research fellow in something called the Oxford Brooks University. So it's not the famous Oxford University. It's the 
other university in Oxford. I work in something called the Institute for Ethical AI. Um, so um, yeah, I'm a researcher, uh, work pr primarily in social machines um, con and computational creativity. And sort of prior to that, and, and in parallel with that, I have a pretty long history with open source and common space peer production um, and peer learning, um, and especially what happens when you combine all of those things together. So I'll leave it at that for now. Um, Lauren, the, the like baton to... I can pass okay. to, uh, to uh, Pete, although he put his links in the chat, but maybe he wants to say it anyway. <laughs> I am more than my links. Um, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Peter Kaminsky, and uh, I've been working for a long, long time on helping people work together better. And then there's another part of that. I usually work on fairly small groups of people working um, together, but then those people want to publish to the world. And so there's, um, you know, so there's tensions there. Um, uh, I've also got a long experience uh, in Silicon Valley entrepreneurship, um, where I've co-founded a bunch of companies, uh, some of which were open source based companies. Uh, so um, I've got a lot of kind of fine grained uh, experience in um, in structures, IP structures for Silicon Valley, including uh, open source and things like that. So how do you know, how do we play with um, intellectual property and and ownership and um, patents and co copyrights and trademarks and trade secrets um, uh, in regards or with respect to generative commons one of my the as as generative commons has kind of been coming together um, one of my positions is um, advocating for the commons and advocating against ownership and enclosure uh, so um, i'm really excited to see the generative commons coming together uh, I'll, I will pass it to Turquoise. Hello, everyone. My name is Turquoise. I'm glad to be here. Um, <clears throat> I started off in startup uh, tech in Silicon Valley, small tech, did big tech after that. Um, I started a closed circuit uh, television station, switched out of Silicon Valley, and then was a touring musician for a while on the transformative music festival circuit, switched out of that, uh, started an intentional community, and since then um, have been doing heart-centered leadership, organizational development and design, and uh, coaching. I worked at the uh, Integral Leadership Review and the Integral um, Leadership Academy, as well as my own company, Dyer Global. And so we, um, I teach at the local university in Tampa, USF, uh, engineers, how to do heart-centered leadership and those sorts of things. My interest here is I didn't even know what was going on, but Vincent just pinged me. And I was like, oh, I need this because I have some side projects around tech. And as I'm getting back into related to the linked open wisdom commons and um, creating some of these new sort of uh, P2P networks um, that inform Form, um, the IRL or the in real life um, embodiment of some of the tech psychotechnologies to quote some Don Verbanke stuff, um, social process technologies that are necessary to kind of weave together with our traditional digital technologies or everything from like um, <clears throat> agriculture on up of what we think of as technology. And so the intersection of those is where I'm interested, the interoperability between memetics, uh, collective intelligence that can kind of be in service to that. And so kind of getting back to nature and balance and a holistic sort of systems view. So I'm really interested in learning more about IP as it's such a uh, key component to all of that. So thank you so much. Oh, and there's Benjamin. <laughs> Benjamin, you've just fallen into this room. Uh, we're doing a short round of intros. Uh, and maybe it's more merciful to have someone else who hasn't uh, said hi yet go first and then come back. Um, so how about Judy and then Benjamin? Good morning. Um, I'm Judy Benham. I'm from Minnesota. I met Jerry about 15, 16 years ago in a consultancy role that he was in and connected with a variety of groups that he's been involved with during the years in between. Um, I'm currently, I retired from corporate life about 15 years ago and am working largely with nonprofits now in 
helping them manage change and vision change, uh, create new futures, find different ways of engaging people um, with an under, undercurrent or maybe sometimes overt current of uh, sensitivity to inclusion and diversity. And it, I'm interested uh, in the generative commons because that's how you connect all of these people to share ideas and become wiser together. <laughs> Sorry. That's right, love that, Judy. Um, Benjamin, do you wanna jump in? Yeah, I'm happy to, can you hear me okay? Just fine, you're coming in okay. five by five as the radio geeks say. Nice, I actually just came out of a radio station. I am working in a suburb of Jackson, Mississippi on a mayoral campaign. Um, which <laughs> might seem not relevant or related to this conversation, but um, I see the, the civic space and the, the renewal of um, the civic space being very connected to the renewal of the commons, um, that space in between um, trying to create a culture of togetherness, practicing um, what could be called integral politics. Um, I've been really inspired by the conversations I've been having with Turquoise recently around um, doing the practice of integral, um, not just the theory of um, integration and wholeness, but um, actually having generative conversations that create novel insights. Um, and then as I've been invested in systems entrepreneurship, I've been following deeper deeper down the rabbit hole of um, what are the most fundamental changes that we can create to create new systems and structures. I, in the last few months, have <clears throat> gone from the blockchain governance world, the cooperative, uh, new models of creating cooperatives, um, hollow chain, different ways of thinking about sharing information, um, connected to different ways of organizing people, um, and that all of that led me to the commons. And so I've been thinking a lot about how to um, create interoperable data structures for people to share, um, not just linked data, but linked wisdom. Uh, wisdom being information that is contextually relevant to um, a particular context. And the context that I'm most inspired by is creating a world that works for all. And I think that is a, a story, a meta narrative that um, can actually weave together these systems thinkers with people who are actually on the ground building things um, and to create a wisdom commons where we're able to share that information to accelerate those systemic changes. So um, I'm very excited to be here. I think the generative commons is um, a big missing piece that I had not been thinking of that when it came to my awareness, it's like, oh yeah, of course we need that. Um, and so I'm excited to play with Vincent and Peter and Turquoise and Alex and all of you that I have yet to meet um, to see how we connect all of these systems in kind of an ecosystem of a wisdom commons. That was a little bit long-winded, but I'm, I'm complete. That was awesome. It's too bad we have so little in common as a, as a first-time posse. Um, Alex, would you want to jump in? Yeah, hey everyone, can you hear me all right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, great to be here with you all. Uh, thanks for pinging me into this, um, Vincent. Uh, I recognize some of you from some of the previous calls. So yeah, it's, um, and, and from elsewhere as well. Um, this is, I mean, I think I'm probably gonna be sort of riffing off a little bit from uh, what, what Benjamin has been saying really. Um, my background is actually in film um, and I've been working on a new model of uh, collective uh, that I'm hoping we'll be able to distill some of the information that's out there in terms of some of these complex problems that, that, that we're all aware of and essentially kind of, I'm looking at creating a system in which we can be utilizing the collective intelligence of a, of a larger group and how we can actually be sort of distilling that information into its component parts and then restructuring it into some kind of coherent narrative that then can, can be um, uh, presented through new forms of interactive media, uh, film and story. And how do we actually kind of talk about where we're going, what's, what's coming forward, 
what's what's the what's the future that we we're all looking uh, we're all looking at that I think is emerging from from conversations like this. Um, so yeah, and I'm looking very much to try and almost kind of present a bit of a blueprint as to how to build these sovereign networks of people that can that others can follow. So uh, I'm I'm sort of approaching it from very much kind of like working in public type of uh, type of um, yeah approach that where I can essentially be talking to some of the people that that really know about some of this stuff, and we can be weaving in some of this information. Uh, and I can be kind of talking about that 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 kind of storyline of how you you set up something like this, how you protect um, commons within within a group of people, how you how you begin to kind of create these sharing uh, and and gifting economies within uh, within groups. Uh, so something so that you can have something that is protected uh, and presenting an alternative to the current models the, that we currently have. Um, so yeah, great to great to be here. Hopefully, I might be able to add some parts here and there, but I'm hoping I can at least be a sort of channel for any of the, the kind of results here in some way. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you for joining us. Uh, Vincent, thank you for inviting so many cool people uh, to join the conversation. Um, Charles? Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> delighted to be here and see everyone. And, and Vincent could move on the few extras that you brought in. Um, well. Uh, I guess um, almost everyone knows most of this, but um, to try to bundle myself somehow here for why I'm here. I'm an idea DJ, a music DJ, festival event and series producer, team builder, um, catalyst of communications, community content, uh, blah, 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 LinkedIn stuff. Um, uh, I'm co-founder of Kiko Lab with Lauren here and um, we are and aspire to be a Commons Innovation Laboratory. And by the way, June 7th, mark your calendar that Monday um, in the Northern Hemisphere, we uh, have a round table specifically around the Commons with uh, hopefully everyone or many of us here uh, energizing that. Um, and uh, yeah, we're sort of tackling head on and also sideways the challenge of really collaborating, including around IP and these kind of things. So what does that really mean? How can we really do it? The nitty gritty. Um, and the meta around interoperability flow, wisdom flow. These are some of the, the things that we pass around. Um, we, we also weave communities um, like the Gray Swan Guild, which is scaled in a shorter time than us uh, to over 1200 worldwide. Um, so these are all our friends, these various sister circles, including um, how um, Vincent and I know many of you here through the Clubhouse of Systems Innovators um, Cl uh, club and weekly room that we now move to Wednesday. So today, uh, four o'clock Eastern, we're back there. So that's uh, a bit about me. Sweet, thank you. And Lauren has a slime pass, which is unusual, novel, but but really appreciated. Um, so who'd like to set the table for the conversation? Pete, do you want to take a swing at that? Uh, I actually don't. Okay. I, I appreciate um, the offer, Jerry, but no, thanks. Sure. <laughs> Um, what about also, a tiny back backdrop on the term and the name and, and sort of what, what that, that came out of? That's what I'm heading toward. Um, exactly. Um, I, I did okay. post a couple links um, so uh, people can can read so maybe faster you, than we can cover it in speech. Exactly. Well, I, uh, we could take a break and read the documents. Let, let me just give a... Uh, a quick one in speech is also great. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Follow the links. The links are really good because the links summarize kind of where we are. Um, we uh, in the middle of conversations about creating a fiscal sponsorship between o Open Global Mind or a piece of a nascent piece of Open Global Mind and this entity called Lionsburg, uh, moving toward a structure called steward ownership, which is one of many different structures that seem to be amenable to um, making a living while nurturing commons, while creating sustainable long-term sort of uh, businesses and, and commons. Um, we hit a, a passage about intellectual property uh, while writing a memorandum of agreement. And the, the language in the, in the uh, intellectual property section seemed very old school to us. And it was making all of us itch and crawl. Um, and so we started thinking and we started thinking sort of generatively. And we were like, well, we love, create, we love creative commons, that's really good, but that's just about copyright. What about patents and trademarks? But also 
what about the spirit of stepping into this kind of conversation? What, what, how do we give people some awareness of how, what, this, what this dance is like and why we're all leaning into feeding, nurturing the commons and the many different kinds of commons. But here, I think we're, we're talking about idea commons, intellectual commons, wisdom commons, whatever else, and also trust commons, social commons, and so forth. So I think that, that a lot of what came up here really, you know, I, I think that, that societal trust is a, is a form of commons, just like clean air is a form of commons. Um, and that led to this idea just bursting out uh, about why don't, well, why don't we create a generative commons agreement, which will wrap itself around things like creative commons and other sorts of stuff that's already established and already like works pretty well, but wrap up sort of a bigger container around it um, so that uh, people knowing that they're walking into something that's agreed to the, gen the generative commons uh, basically means that it means certain things about uh, any intellectual property they might own. Uh, it means things about how we work together. It means uh, it has a whole, whole bunch of implications, which this, you know, this conversation is meant to help flesh out uh, and figure out where to go. Um, and that idea sort of took hold. We like it a lot. Um, we bought generativecommons.org, so we have a domain. There's nothing on it yet, uh, but this is the this is the first sort of organized conversation to sit down and figure out. Uh, what does it look like? Where to go? Who might role models be? You know, is is this like, is this like a Linux distribution? Is this like Creative Commons plus plus? Is this like something else entirely? We don't know. Um, and I will pause now for anybody who'd like to add to that story. I just wanted to chime in. I, I put in the chat, and Lauren sort of. Uh... I don't know if you can hear Lauren, or if you want to chime in. I I, I flagged you um, long research um, and, and specialization into innovation commons. So I just, you know, maybe add to the list. Um, and my lens is like through action, getting shit done, producing. So I think thinking in terms of innovation might be useful here as well. Which rapidly brings us into the misuses of intellectual property law and overprotection of intellectual property and a bunch of other things that, <clears throat> that irritate me for sure. And I think a, a couple of those of us uh, uh, along the way. Lauren, uh, well, Charles was pointing to your work on intellectual um, commons or innovation uh, and how that fits. Do you want to re explain it, Charles? Well, I was trying to prompt you, Lauren, from afar, but if you feel like just, just to commenting on, on your work and, and sort of w one reason that the sparks were flying when we came together a few years ago, but, um, and just how that fits in, th that, that type of commons approach. Maybe, no, not enough. Okay, never mind. <laughs> okay, okay. Anyway, you got it. Go carry on, everyone. I, I, I love that. That's that's a, a meta comment on everything. I honestly cannot hear a thing with all the whining in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Was that social commentary? I think this is uh, really on point. So it's yeah. just like certain point. artists that, that some of us know doing, you know, vocal tracks, you know, not listening on the headphones to the rhythm section. Anyway, they don't it's need to. an example of Lauren's pithy wisdom. <laughs> it's LPW. Um, Lauren's pithy wisdom. <laughs> in a pithy expression, right? Um, so I'm interested in how anybody would like to frame this or what, uh, who is inspired by this in terms of a structure or a path or uh, a framing for the conversation? I would, sure. I would actually love to prompt you slightly more, Jerry, in terms of the context um, and the notion of, of the sovereigns. I mean, without, I don't know if there's some kind of very concise overview, possibly um, in terms of the, also the notion of a, of a guild or just, um, you know, a, a sovereign in itself, um, energizing this conversation and c creating a kind of container. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm seeing a lot of fuzziness all around, but these are the things that we have been involved in conversation, um, some of us here. So if that's yeah. useful. I was trying to avoid an explanation of, of the steward ownership and a bunch of other stuff that didn't seem exactly relevant to the generative commons part of it. Um, but a piece of what we're, I think we're trying to build and model 
is what does a flotilla of small sovereign entities look like that are that are moving together to um, make the world better, uh, which I think is a shared intention here in this room. Uh, and, and how do we collaborate so that the value gets shared so that the rest of the world can benefit from the things that are created? Uh, and how do we shape ourselves into entities or uh, or different kinds of agglomerations with, with sort of purpose? And that the notion of a guild, for example, is in the air right now. Um, borrowing from medieval guilds and borrowing from World of Warcraft guilds, although actually quite different from World of Warcraft, but the notion of might there be a trade or a craft that is specific to some aspect of minding commons? So in conversation with Christina Bowen and a couple others uh, that are part of the Dig Life Collective, a couple of years ago, we came up with Map Whisperers. So we have the domain mapwhisperers.com. And the idea was I'm a map whisperer using the brain technology, which I did not create, but I'm a black belt brain user. She's a black belt Kumu user. So is Jean Bellinger, so are other people. Um, and I apologize, there's a spam message that just came in and got blocked automatically by the system. Why it rang, I don't know. Um, but uh, but how might, might there be a guild for people who are really good at visualization and mapping? And what does that look like? I think, I think there's a reason for that. And then there's a variety of other kinds of trades and crafts here uh, that could be represented in guild-like structures. So that could be a part of the generative commons agreement. Um, and we had a conversation yesterday about what stewarding means and whether we should be stewarding commons or nurturing commons or guardians of commons or what is the right languaging around this. That's interesting interesting as well. And Charles, I don't know if that addresses the, the kinds of things you wanted to put in the room. No, that's great. Thanks. It works. Uh, now, Joe, sorry. Um, so uh, I feel I'm coming both kind of late to this conversation and also even more late to the whole uh, thing in the sort of sense that I've been doing this 20 years. Maybe I, I got here a bit too early in a sense. So um, <laughs> I was too early to be late then. Now I'm just late. So um, I think that the, uh, the uh, thing I just dropped in the chat was this notion from Triz of ideal final result. And uh, probably those who know design may have come across the ideal final result. Um, uh, Jerry, what you just said, um, talked a lot about how, but what does this generative commons, what would it do? What would it achieve? It, it, it wouldn't just exist. Uh, what would it, what would it be? Not what would it be? What would it get done? That's the question. I, I, have. I see it as an opportunity for affiliation of ideas and an affinity grouping of individuals inspired to work on similar things of importance so that they can share and collaborate in moving in whatever that vector might be. And there's an infinite number of vectors, but the commons is a way to allow individuals and groups to find one another and share their visions and actions and amplify both by working together collectively. And to build on what you said, um, part of our energy is backlash against the overprotection of intellectual property in today's real world, uh, which means that the gene for breast cancer is patented and research on that gene is controlled by a company that owns the rights to it. Seriously? Um, and that the way to profits and becoming famous and wealthy is to lock away parts of the commons and to make them inaccessible to others and maybe sell metered access to them and other sorts of things. And, and, and one of my frustrations for years uh, is that books basically are protected by intellectual property laws. And it's like, why is the wisdom in books not just available in the world? So I think the thing we're aiming toward is the usefulness of what we know and the manifestation of what we know in ways that, that are easily accessible so that all of us can draw on one another's wisdom and build together solutions for how things, you know, uh, for, for, for the world's uh, ailments, uh, or better yet, uh, good designs, positive designs uh, for uh, thriving together. And, and that's made very, very difficult by the depletion of commons in ways like the Copyright Act of 1973 and, and others, uh, and the latest Copyright Term Extension Act of 1998, which basically denuded the commons further uh, rather than enriching it. So, th so I think, uh, Joe, I think a lot of this is about helping us know what we know and use it better. If I could try to be brief about it. David, go ahead. And uh, David, then Joe. Um, something 
that and recently as I've been thinking more about the commons and it really was a, a shock to me how little I was aware of commons as a as a as a real generative notion um, because it's it's was, it was there as a as a concept um, but something that I've been thinking of lately is um, through actually looking at this is, is thinking as an ecosystem rather than thinking about an ecosystem and there's something that really changes in that that agent arena relationship is a dynamic actually co um, coexisting co experiential notion rather than okay I'm I'm here doing that to this environment right. And so even the phrase, um, a world that works for everyone sort of keeps the world out there rather than a world towards which everyone is working, right? That we're actually creating the world, not, not trying to inter interact with it from an external perspective. Um, and there's something else that comes up in this that I think is really beautiful in the commons stewardship type notion, which is actually listening to dissonance um, with either not having animosity or antagonism or having generative antagonism, having some way of knowing that the, the dissonance actually is calling attention to something that is, um, dissonance only happens in me because there's some disconnect or some um, something out of tune between my head and my heart kind of is the way that I think of that. And actually listening to that, not as you're causing me pain, but ah, you're inviting me to look at something that I didn't want to look at, something that's challenging who I think I am and who I think we are. So those notions kind of as a frame um, in some way precede or kind of the foundational part about what we might do. Um, all of that kind of, it, it changes my perspective of how I might engage with others when I find that I'm not really trying to stifle or compete in some way, that I'm really trying to express more fully. Beautiful, David, Joe? So yeah, so I, I just wanted to come back and say that out of uh, different answers that people were, were saying, I felt some of those things were answers to what I what I prompted about. Some of them were about how, and some were kind of about what. And I I would really uh, quite encourage uh, a little bit more thinking about uh, about what, because I think some of the hows were like we would be a flotilla of collaborating projects and stuff, and, and that we've heard that before now for some months, and there's nothing wrong with that. But I think this was meant to be sort of a new thing, and what's this new generative commons thing? going to do or going to achieve just as a for example something that's been on my mind that, that i haven't achieved but this might achieve would be building something that's equivalent to walmart but is um open source 100 percent open source and run as a run as a co-op or something like that building that's equivalent to uh walmart or amazon but is a worker owned co-op something like that and we would have that thing and we'd all be stakeholders in that and that would be the ideal final result because that would be what the generative commons would achieve and then this other thing would go off on its way. That's just an example because that's something that I would love to do, um, but I've never gotten around to doing it. Um, but yeah, there may be other things and that's not against the hows. I think the thing is about the hows uh, as you know, we'll do it in an open source way or we'll be collaborative, all that kind of stuff. I think we're pretty skilled on that. But I think in terms of figuring out what is this thing that we're gonna actually get done, I haven't seen it happen yet in my own life for 20 years, so. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to know more about it. I'd like to jump in for a second, then pass it to Charles. Um, riffing off what David said a moment ago, for me, dissonance is kind of a clue. And the reason I'm worried, I got worried about trust was that I felt that the word consumer caused dissonance in my life and I noticed it and I slowed myself down enough to pay attention to it. And then I paid attention to it for 25 years and it, and it birthed a thesis in my head that I love. That fits where the fits. I think the way we're seeing the world, um, and so I th so for me a lot. What, kids are great, like little magnets for this because kids ask like totally brutally honest questions, like why is this a, you know why why is this not working, um, and then we basically tell them well that's just because the that's the way the world is. But the way we the way adults think the world is is stuff we've been socialized to believe in, and we speak the world into being all the time every day. And when we generate those words, they're, they're, they're invented in this sort of framing we assume to be true, um, that is sort of generational or slightly longer than generational. And I think a piece of what we're looking to do is to change these scripts so that we can speak a world into being that's abundant instead of scarce, that's collaborative instead of competitive, that has, you know, and, and because there is abundance all over the place, we could feed people, we could do a bunch of other things. And so, so in the background, there's a war between communism and socialism and free market globalized neoliberal capitalism. And that's, 
that's a big piece of the background radiation for this conversation because the capitalist model wants to eat ideas so much and, 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 and sequester them. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of other kinds of battles uh, sort of in the background, which uh, a generative commons agreement, like we've lost the word commons so much. Like when I give speeches, I'm like, who can tell me what a commons is? And there's like a pregnant pause for 30 seconds. And then somebody says, that's like forests, right? I'm like, yes. And then we go from there, right? Because we've lost this whole notion of commons, which is something that indigenous people around the world knew and had internalized and knew how to maintain. And then we broke that in the colonial era. Sorry for the long screed. Off to you in the, in, under the coin, Charles. Uh, thanks. Yeah, this is, I'm enjoying this conversation. I just wanted to kind of um, go back to Joe, something you said about something new to try building and the example that you gave kind of triggered a few thoughts. Um, <clears throat> and actually, I would, I'm just going to um, sort of promptly uh, go pass it to Vincent possibly, but I think just one, one approach um, rather than a Walmart is like, what about a dynamic knowledge repository? You know, what about actually making this thing that Engelbart and others, um, you know, fervently wished for and just never really quite got got going. Um, but um, but to this other interesting idea of the new kind of Walmart that's cooperative, I would point to Vincent. I, I don't know if you had any really kind of quick um, inputs there, having um, got some fresh learnings, if I understand, around cooperation and also um, knowing quite a bit about retail and supply chain and stuff. Uh, I don't know how that example fits for you, Vincent, um, the new kind of Walmart. <laughs> I guess it, thanks Charles, it, it kind of prompts the uh, dissonance as a clue, like trade-offs is like the word that comes to mind because any um, centralized system like Walmart's versus having a farmer's market, there are going to be trade-offs to both, right? So you have consistency of a brand on one end, which is something that is valuable for a lot of people and a lot of businesses. Um, and then on the other side, you have like, you know, the ugly fruits where it's like, it's okay to be inconsistent. Um, and the thing between those two uh, and the reason where one of those is a positive versus a negative actually could be the cultural narrative. Um, right? Like if we saw things that were cookie cutter and mass manufactured as ugly and cheap and things that were um, more unique and handcrafted and artisanal as higher quality, which that's starting to happen, then it actually switches of which one of those trade-offs is positive or negative. And so I think the cultural narratives definitely sit in a big way um, between these different trade-offs. Trade um, and when it comes to kind of like the um, knowledge repository, there's trade-offs between the quantity of information and the quality. There's trade-offs between how that information is, is linked or whether you have very loose constraints over being able to put information out there and not having to link it to things. Um, and so, yeah, I think the general commons, um, I, I think the hope is, is like an ecosystem in nature those trade-offs end up kind of being in a dynamic equilibrium and are kind of balanced. And I think we need to do that with our social systems. Like how do we, how do we create that, that balance so that the trade-offs are, are playing back and forth in a way that um, is working for all of us. Thank you. Uh, where does that put us right now? seems to me that part of the definition we're framing here is an intrinsic wholesomeness and constructiveness of the sharing of content and information, as well as the processes that enable that. And if we can frame that as sort of the doctrine of belonging <laughs> as a consensual process and a social commitment, that would take us in the direction I'd like to see the commons go, rather than thinking of it as collections of sovereign entities with their own order structures and so forth. I mean, I think sovereign entities are part of that, but they enter the commons as a participant in a shared value system and a shared ethos. Uh, 
Um, other thoughts, Alex, Benjamin, Turquoise, um, where does this put you? I, I posted two questions uh, in the chat, one of which I think Judy answered quite elegantly and beautifully. Um, what would be the underlying agreements or worldviews embedded within a generative commons agreement? Um, the, the notion of wholeness, wholesomeness, um, this kind of meta-modern sincerity of participation. Um, that feels like something emerging. And then um, I'd also posted something about reputation um, in a previous comment in terms of uh, what mechanisms would the integrity of the generative commons be maintained. Um, so I, I don't see us being an overly litigious group. And so I feel like outside of uh, the traditional legal frameworks available, this kind of, this may sit outside of those frameworks. And so reputation is just one mechanism that I've discovered that could be applied to the, the, the commons uh, to maintain the integrity of that agreement. Um, obviously, you would need everyone on the planet to be participating in this uh, uh, shared information space where we can signal to each other about the intents and the actions of various agents within a system. Um, but at least within the, the communities that we're a part of to maintain that relational integrity through some sort of signaling uh, of how in alignment someone is with that generative commons agreement um, and then use uh, kind of demand side regulations to maybe boycott organizations that are manipulating the commons. Um, and, and using it to, to a benefit that's not seen to be wholesome. Um, so I'm curious thoughts on, on those ideas. Thank you, that, that broadens my notions of, of this conversation in really nice ways, I appreciate that. And I can see easily a path toward silly language, but lobbying to change some of the framing legislation that makes us live within crappy rules around the commons and, and all of that, that could be a part of this as well. Pete? You are muted. A newbie error. Totally get it. A newbie, yes. Um, I, I, I posted it in the chat. I also wanted to read it into the transcript. Um, uh, thanks, Benjamin. The, in, in partial answer, um, this is something that Jordan wrote. Uh, so by the way, there's an interesting kind of background to this. Um, one of the participants in this in this uh, quest um, is, has, is Jordan Sukut, um, who's not here today. Um, uh, but uh, he, I recognize the writing, uh, he wrote this part, uh, the generative commons itself should have, among other things, a sovereign identity and government structure, a voice in higher order systems, a proactive strategy to acquire, protect, and preserve. Um, he, he uses the word property, but he puts it in parentheses because he doesn't want to say property, um, because property is ownership is enclosure. Uh, which is the thing that we're working against. Um, and, 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 as, and aside, by the way, so one of the dualities or, or uh, dualities that we find ourselves in when we're talking about the generative commons is that the generative commons um, is in contrast to the existing culture of enclosure and ownership and capitalism and property. And so where they're, when we're all together and, and we're living in the generative commons, we don't have to use things like property and ownership, maybe. Um, maybe we use things like participation instead. But when we have to start interfacing with other parts of the world that aren't there yet, um, we need to start using language like, you know, I'm protecting stuff. Um, I, you know, I, I own this. And when, you know, when I say I own this, you know, in the commons world, it's like I'm shepherding it or I'm stewarding it or so, or whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it for all of us. But over there, it, it sounds like, um, uh, well, if nobody owns it, then I'm going to take it. And so then I have to say that I own it, you know, on behalf of others. Um, uh, and the last bullet that Jordan had was um, a strategy associated with estate and organizational succession planning. So one of the one of the other interesting things that we've got ourselves into as a society is this concept of um, extra human structures um, 
uh, uh, by extra there, I mean outside of human structures. So we have the concept that there can be six successional uh, ownership and um, corporate personhood and things that um, uh, benefit um, uh, benefit larger structures that uh, become larger than individuals and larger than 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 groups. And then we have a, another fight on our hands that we have to fight corporate structures that have, you know, legally at least um, uh, human rights and and the ability to last forever and and to grow as big as they can, um, which you know which isn't fair um, when we're talking about putting those structures up against humans, uh, individual humans or groups of humans. Um. One of the things in my back, in the background for me, it comes from the book, The Great Transformation by Carl Polanyi, where he talks about the transformation from pre-industrial to early industrial society. And one of the cool things he says is that uh, three new fictitious commodities were invented, land, labor, and money. And those eight are brains. Uh, and, and so land, like you couldn't just walk down the block to the century 21 and buy, buy a plot of land for your factory. Land had to be sort of pried loose and made into a market. Labor, everybody was tied to the land or tied to some indenture or feudal or something or other. It wasn't just a, a labor workforce and everything didn't have a price. A lot of people stayed alive without any money uh, because they grew stuff behind them. They shared, you know, when they slaughtered the pig, they smoked, they shared out uh, parts of the pig with their, their neighbors or their family or whatever, et cetera. And this shift was really profound, increasingly profound because another wise thing that Bologna says is that market, uh, market economy requires market society. And the analogy I draw is that capitalism or industrialism, which becomes capitalism, which then becomes consumerism, uh, it's like a cuckoo bird. It's a brood parasite. It, 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 should, it can't really have other forms of thriving or of existing living next to it because it needs everybody in the labor pool. It needs all the land in, in the land pool uh, and everything has to have a price or, you know, or we don't get this sort of market effect uh, for everything. And so, and so it ate all of our old understandings of commons, all of our old understandings of reciprocity, all of the old ties that made society got crashed through that process of industrializing, uh, consumerizing, et cetera. And in part, I think we're trying to mend some of that. And, and so I think there's another, yet another, as, as we're talking around the room here, I'm seeing, oh, there's another leaf of this flower of, of what this could be. And I think another piece of this is, how can we, how can we in, enfold, include, head back toward uh, different notions of, of uh, being together on the planet that don't include things like ownership and property and all of that uh, in a way that, but, but how do we do that in a way that actually sort of works as a social path? Because, because when the industrial revolution happened, that, that still has eaten our brains. Like, like that model for how the world works is why the SDGs exist. And one of the SDGs, one of those sustainable just, uh, development goals is people should have a certain amount of money so that they're not poor. And poverty is a new term in 1650. We don't have poverty before 1650. We, we might not have any money and we might starve because the crops failed, but the idea that one family in town is going to die because they don't have money to buy food is foreign to us. That's not how things normally work. Um, unemployment is a new word in about 1750. Um, anyway, uh, and I can put the, uh, I can put a link to, um, that talk in the chat in a second. So is this an ongoing set of conversations? Do we want to, um, how do we want to organize ourselves to tackle this relatively big thing? We already have some artifacts on the web as pages that Pete has, has put up uh, as documents that Jordan and Matt, who's not in the room also, and a few other interested parties helped create. Uh, we have a bunch of interested people here. This is clearly a time consumptive endeavor. I mean, the, given all the different aspects of this problem that we've already put uh, on the table here, uh, there's a lot here. And from my own perspective, if we were to discover tomorrow that someone else has done most of this really, really well, I'd be like, awesome, let's join them and make their effort like succeed. That I, I feel no reason to go build some a, a unique thing if, 
if something that that satisfies the 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 need that we have here already exists and there are clearly component parts that already exist like creative commons which we can include by reference and try to sort of figure out how better to blend in with what it is we think we're doing charles um rome wasn't built in a day <laughs> big wisdom here um so it, i I'm guessing, I didn't hear it stated, but maybe I missed it. it, it this is um, sort of um, now on the schedules of some of us uh, as a weekly thing, or is that the notion? Maybe, possibly, I, I'm not advocating. I'm just kind of weighing that out with regard to the other regular things on, on my own calendar, for example. But um, um, again, just want to underscore the invitation, the open invitation, which will be disseminated more broadly um, for June 7th at Kiko Lab as a round table, a kind of a summit, and that's an opportunity to sort of um, have something um, of a deadline um, to, to, to focus and to, to get some something together. And that's up to us and others as well. Um, and it's not just about getting a bunch of people there, but getting the right people there and having the right types of um, structures within which to, to focus and so forth. Um, yeah, so that's uh, some kind of uh, meta structural stuff around the container that we, we some of us will be or, or want to be or are checking out the idea of co building the container. Um, I, I will suggest, add, go ahead, Judy. I was just going to suggest that um, we could spend our entire lives framing this in its context because it's so enormous. And the phrase that I like from another organization was let a thousand flowers grow. I think we should just identify some flowers, let them germinate, grow and connect with one another and, and let this evolve rather organically because I think you can't plan something that's a belonging and gaining and growing organically something. Um, it's not a planful process per se, it's an enabling process. So I would encourage us not to try to spend too much time framing it unless it's in a context of how do we pluck the weeds from the flower garden? Because I think there's a danger of weeds in any flower garden. For and, sure. And so I think, but I'd rather get lots of flowers growing and see how they evolve, which will in itself define what this process is, rather than investing a lot of friend energy in the process itself, because I think it will inevitably not be fully inclusive, even in the best outcome. Turquoise? I had a question. Um, taking that approach, what is the tracking me mechanism by which we can, you know, see the weeds and kind of, uh, you know, watch the growth um, and and uh, iterate on on whatever happens or tend to the garden, so to speak. If that's kind of our way of being. So there's a couple things we have already and can do now. Uh, Pete pointed out in the chat, there's some documents that live in a wiki online. There's also a chat space on Mattermost, which is a Slack-like uh, service that we're using. So there's a place to talk sort of persistently if we want to. So if you just click on that link and join that Mattermost and you'll be in that conversation where we can pick this up and keep going. Um, and, um, and David, I think you have to leave as well, don't you? Yeah, thank you for thank you very much for being here. Really, see you, David. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Yeah, um, I'm on the matter most, and I've I've got the uh, thing the things. Is there? Uh, I've looked at the uh, the links. Is there like a repository of the uh, experiments that are going on, or are we calling like uh, Flotilla Kiko Labs? Are those are those the experiments? Are there other experiments of like um, generative commons that are kind of spinning up or? So part of what we probably need to do is develop some examples of generative commons and a, a storyline through that. Through that, um, In my brain, for example, I curate all this kind of stuff. So I have, I have a bunch of ideas about you know, commons organizations. A bunch of us know uh, a little or a lot about Lynn Ostrom's principles yeah. for managing good commons. And that's clearly an inspiration for what we're doing. Um, and making easier access to that, I think, is, a, is an interesting thing. And the, other, the last thing I wanted to mention before passing the mic to Pete was that Open Global Mind has a structure, a still nascent, unfortunately, structure called, Gil, uh, called Quests, uh, which is basically something, a, a project that has some kind, of a, some kind of a deadline where we know when, we, when, a, when a quest is kind of done. 
And we could, uh, we can use that framing to create a, an OGM quest that this can live under for a while until, until and if it, it gets its own sort of uh, sovereignty. Um, and that would be great because that would help us sort of attract uh, other interested parties. And, and we then have some, we then have some spaces into which we can, we can pour our energies. Uh, Pete. Uh, thanks, Jerry. Um, uh, I wanted to say that the, the links that I posted uh, are the web version of wiki pages. Um, so those wiki pages are right now uh, in the OGM wiki. Uh, I can imagine that generative commons could have its own wiki. Um, uh, and then there's pros and cons to having it be a massive wiki, uh, which we can get into. Um, of, of course, I'm happy to help anybody use a massive wiki or set up a massive wiki. But um, I also recognize that they're, they're um, not as easy as they could be right now. Um, <clears throat> I also wanted to um, also, I guess uh, Vincent and then Vincent and I um, are also in conversation about repositories. So um, you can also imagine part of the repository might be within Trove and part of the repository might be within Trove and the Generative Commons Wiki, and those things might talk to each other. That's what I was thinking, yeah. I would flag KikoLab in that mix around repositories because we're trying to bridge on this as well. So a thing that's pretty easily doable, but a little bit wonky is to use Massive, and Pete, tell me if this would make sense to you and if you'd like to do it. We have generativecommons.org. We can stand up a Massive site there and make it its own vault in Obsidian uh, and basically collaborate to build up, just build a web presence. Uh, that's a wiki in the background, but looks like a website where we start framing out all these kinds of things and have a link to, hey, join our chat over here. Do whatever, and this could this could look like an entity relatively quickly, given technology we have on hand. Uh, then collaborating on that means understanding how Obsidian and GitHub and a few other other uh, tools work. Uh, but it's that's very doable. We have a bunch of people doing that. But that that's something we can stand up really quickly. And Pete, does that sound like a reasonable direction? Um, I I think so. Um, but but then I'd also like to hear from more people if that's a, a reasonable participatory way to to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And part of the reason I say that is that um, anybody who understood how to post uh, documents, uh, markdown documents into that vault, roughly speaking, or onto that wiki, would then be able to modify that website. We could sort of build it collaboratively in that way. So it's so, so the barrier is, tech, is sort of a little bit of technical know-how, but it makes it pretty uh, even-handed in terms of us being able to improve this thing together. Uh, other thoughts? Is that, uh, I, maybe, did you say, because uh, you said earlier, but I didn't catch that you just um, connected that to this domain, the generative so, comments so org. Is that what I'm, what I'm saying? That? Yes, what I'm saying, Charles, is that we would do exactly what we did when we rebuilt the Open Global Mind website, which I originally built on Google Sites, and we just moved right. over to Massive. So exactly like that, but for right. generativecommons.org. So, so Jerry, I have a very direct question. Um, yes. I'm going to try to just say it straight. You said we bought. Generative so I, I purchased. I own. There right. is no. There is no OGM entity at this so, moment. So so allow me just to finish the thought, which is, sure. can we, in the spirit of the commons, co-own this? Can we come together and literally collaborate, even down to that level? Uh, describe to me what entity to transfer the ownership of the domain to, and I will happily I, do so. I, I don't know if that's exactly what's what I'm. Uh, asking about, but just the idea of it, and then we can, you know, really collaborate around that. Who's got access and does what, and so forth. Um, and I will, I will add in my ignorance that there's tons and tons of entities working on the decentralized web, uh, distributed sorts of ownership and value creation, and a bunch of other models that we can probably, some of which I'm sure we can harness to solve this problem. I, I want to add real quick that uh, Collective Sense Commons already has some shared ownership of things, uh, and and it's not technically done at all. It's it's actually just um, uh, handshakes and and um, uh, and co agreements, and you know a, a shared email account is actually the the root of it. Um, so uh, it it can be very simply done uh, socially without a lot of technical. Um, infrastructure. Other thoughts? This is, um, 
I don't know how long we're planning to go. I think I have to get to some other things shortly at some point, but the, this is really overlapping and weaving with, um, I think many conversations that many of us or all of us are having elsewhere as well, including with each other some, in some combinations. So there's um, this idea of a, of a coalition of sovereigns coming together. There are other alliances and partnerships happening, um, certainly from, from Kiko Lab to some of you. And um, I guess just keeping it broad strokes for the moment, um, there's also more and more talk around different types of business models, um, maybe relating to blockchain or, or not, but with, with uh, tokens and, and um, kind of value flows and, and how to um, uh, re reward, you know, value inputs and, and, and things like that. So I just want to kind of throw some very sloppy um, ideas in the mix because uh, this is a big topic and there's some chats going on about DAOs. And I think um, maybe just to say one really specific thing, just to kind of put this on the table in some way, um, sitting here in Switzerland, and there is um, a kind of organization called the Verein, which is um, the most um, simple, quick, easy, um, nonprofit type of uh, organization that is, um, I guess, getting more popular and, and, um, and because it has advantages for for working in these modes um, with, with uh, alternative currencies. So just, it's just a kind of interesting element I can offer for the mix of our conversation. And thanks Charles. And I'm realizing that we have, um, that we have a, a bit of a scope creep or mission creep problem like right at hand immediately because <clears throat> are we trying to frame participation in commons oriented conversations or are we trying to change society? And I think we're all trying to change society. I think I'm not trying to get rid of that as a, as a mission, but I'm afraid that the generative commons project is also going to become what all of our projects are, which is how do we move value around? How do we, you know, there's a, there's a whole series of, of, of questions about the future structure of organizations and ecosystems and all that. And the moment, the moment we step through that looking glass, we are suddenly uh, absorbing all the different things that we're working on rather than parsing out a, a clear question in the middle that serves us all. And so I'm interested in, in, are there any, and we don't need to answer this right now, but are there any sort of conceptual boundaries to the, the generative commons work that will keep us from turning this into the, the, um, the holographic rendition of all of our efforts to fix the world? Vincent, I'm wondering. I, I asked you before if, if there's something I, I can I can respond directly fresh from your from your co-op stuff or something else. Yeah. So um, I think it's a little different. Um, so my experience is with cooperation Long Island, just kind of like no one really wants to take <laughs> the realm, uh, and and I feel like. That might be a little different here because I feel like each of us has a kind of sovereign where we're okay with more or less stewarding it. Um, and the problem, it seems of a, a quite a, a bit of a different nature, which is um, we know that we want to work together, um, but we don't know how because we don't feel like the agreements or the, the legal structures that exist uh, are going to make it easy. And so I think why we're here, and I think the scope maybe could be what is the generative commons agreement, right? What, what are, what, and that agreement could have a, a legal, like actual text on paper. It could also be a series of ongoing conversations to have a dynamic social agreement, a social layer to the agreement space. Um, but I think um, Benjamin's question of like figuring out the underlying agreements and worldviews that we could all kind of latch onto and say like, this feels like a good direction to start going in and then using that to start being able to work together um, and, and have our projects be moving together in, in parallel to whatever end goal we, we decide. And, and Vincent, that's a, yeah. I, I love that addition. And, and you're saying that reminds me of your dilemma, which might be an aspect or a facet of the generative agreement, generative commons, which is how visible am I when I participate here? Because so far I'm thinking, what happens to the ideas that are shared here? Fine, 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 fine. But one of your problems is I'm a member of this entity, but this entity is sort of private 
and not public? And how do you architect Trove to let me be as visible as I want to be? And is, are there aspects of identity that are germane to a generative commons agreement? And if not, then we've made our lives a lot simpler, by the way. Um, but if they are, then that, that sort of loops in a bunch of other uh, interesting topics about you know, disclosure, transparency, uh, visibility, um, uh, how, you know, what, and including um, sort of um, non-reputable identity, self-sovereign identity, whatever else you want to call us, that we know that people are who they claim to be. Is that an aspect of a generative commons? Don't know. But I, that, that's a whole another petal to the, to the flower that, that just came in for me. I think it should be just a quick answer there. Go ahead, Alex. Just, just, to, just to add in, um, just because I have to go quite, uh, in, in a sec, but um, I think just, just from what I'm also kind of reading from uh, spaces like the the crypto space, you know, there's there's a there's a kind of thing where there is all of the tools and people know how to use them of how to allow for particip you know participatory governance and allow for people to have you know votes and say, says on things and to have skin in the game and, and and own you know what they're creating but at the same time for, for a lot of them they don't have doesn't mean that people participate there's 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 still I th and I think there is some sort of there is a there is a social aspect as well as kind of you know the mediation of technology aspect in the sense that you know people people don't feel that they have the the, the time to commit to to projects, um, even if they do have, you know, a kind of sh shared in intention to some degree. So I think being able to um, being able to kind of uh, disintegrate sort of uh, the 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 tasks that are needed to be done in in a way that people feel like they can they can kind of step into them or they can fit within their um, you know within within their timeframes or whatever um, is is something. Or even maybe just having you know breaking it down into smaller groups so that there's you know, more accountability or a quicker way of, of, of kind of uh, operating on things that, 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 that is able to sort of produce something. I think maybe that's, maybe that's kind of what I'm wondering is, are we, are we, are we talking more, what, what's the kind of initial commons that we're beginning with? Is it more digital uh, knowledge-based commons um, that, that we're focusing on or is it something, something a little larger or, um, but yeah, I do, I, I mean, I certainly think that if we're able to kind of solve that issue in terms of how people are actually, um, you know, how to make that process for participation easier and how we actually kind of enable people to step into some responsibility in something, then I think that will eventually kind of slowly shift to society because we, we want to be able to, you know, if we can start putting forward these proposals of how, um, you know, how people can participate, you know, what, what are the ways in which you can bring participation into something that might have a DAO structure or some other thing, whatever, um, then, you know, then more organizations will adopt it. They will, they will want that participation from customers or, you know, communities or, or, or whatever. Um, but it's, it's how you sort of make that, that uh, an, an easy process, I think is how, um, yeah, I, th I think it's, there's a, there's a necessary kind of like on-ramp of it, of it easy, getting, getting easier, or you kind of have more of an incentive for people to, for people to join in, I think. But mm -hmm. once people are stepping into that civic responsibility, I think there's, there's, there's a lot of potential there. And it feels to me like what I'm describing as petals on a flower feel to me like sort of parsable domain zones within which people could collaborate to answer questions or whatever. And that one way of framing this initiative in this, at this stage is just to put out the most important questions and then to treat those questions as a filter for different kinds of activity that we would engage in that would attract people who have who are interested in each of the different questions you know what is the role of identity in this in this agreement would be its own its own conversation and its own subtopic and maybe its own channel or, or whatever else um pete uh you're muted uh, turquoise did you want to go first yeah um i want to yeah if i can go and then i'm, I'm gonna have to flop to uh, switch to phone because i've got a doctor's appointment but i'll be listening in the ear in my ears so um i just kind of want to go back to um scope and so like if we're specking this what i heard from vincent was three areas basically um 
legal structures, social structures, and digital structures were the kind of three areas that I heard touched on. Uh, and maybe that's too much, or maybe we need to kind of close that. And then, so like answering what IP like uh, is is generative commons. Um, and then what I heard earlier from, from Pete is the handshake between, so like if we think of a generative commons embedded in a local system, um, there's this kind of diffuse pattern, like concentric circles, like, okay, so the people that aren't really able to participate in that type of thinking, in that worldview, will be a circle outward, a circle outward to this harder, you know, neo, you know, um, um, uh, like uh, old school, you know, the past, like the future is at the center and the past is here. And so, the, you know, we can talk about them as permeable membranes or diffuse kind of patterns of, of how we interact. And so this idea of like, okay, we're, we're gonna create this idea at the center. This is the way of being, these are the new social structures of trust, of identity. And then from that, there are like circles is kind of what I was hearing. Um, that, so, so that they can both be protective and grow and germinate and not be co-opted by this, you know, the hungry capitalist, neoliberal global capitalism. And so I'm curious if, if, if we're going to be answering those questions about identity, if we can block them out into their sections, you know, so like if this is a, you know, and so I, I'm thinking of like, did, you know, scope, how we scope this. And, and so that you can get into that lane and chat on that lane or work on that lane, or we're doing social technologies, we're doing IP, we're doing, um, I forgot the other thing, oh, we're doing digital tech. So we're doing DAOs, we're doing Holochain, we're going P2P, we're doing federated. And so we can kind of make these channels, um, or if there's a better framing, I'm, I'm all for it. But that uh -huh. I just wanted to that's what I was hearing. And uh, yeah, so I'll stop there and I'll, I'm gonna hop back over and I'll be in the car listening. And I feel like we're talking very similarly because if you take a circle and you stretch it really long, it becomes a petal on a flower. Um, it's an it's an ellipse and, and we're off and running. So totally, totally. Yeah, agree. I was, I was, uh, I was uh, layering your model on. I was like, okay, how do I integrate Jerry's petal? So that was my next train of thinking in the car. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Uh, and, and it aligns with what Alex just said and off to you, Pete. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I wanted to suggest. I, I thought um, uh, I thought Charles's question was actually really really interesting, and so I I don't have direct experience much with uh, with DAOs and holochains and all that kind of stuff. Um, I have I have a lot of peripheral experience, but not direct experience. But the thing I do have direct experience with is is uh, starting tiny little community owned resources. Um, and I've done that a lot. Uh, and so it's totally possible uh, to, uh, to have a community ownership of generativecommons.org, the, just the domain name, right? And then from there you can bootstrap into, let's have a website and let's have a wiki that runs the website and all that kind of stuff. All of that stuff is super simple to do. Were you just saying like, the domain itself needs to be hosted on some domain hosting registrar like doing that as a community when there is no community entity i don't like that that's well, so what like, i what i, what I would, would suggest that. is you can bootstrap Anything a community any rate pardon right now it's an it, it, uh, registered at google but that's the the service bureau that's handling it right right yeah. now jerry literally owns generativecommons.org the domain which i'm perfectly happy to donate in and one of the things that could happen is we decide that generative commons is an entity under the steward ownership structure of OGM. It then floats out as an entity. And as soon as it has framing, I transfer domain ownership into that entity and we're done. Like, like that is a path I can totally so, see. So my, my suggestion is that community ownership, it's as simple as a shared email address and maybe a chat channel. That's all, that's all you need. Um, so, uh, the other thing that I think it would need is at least four or five participants. Um, if it's too small of a group, it's not really community ownership, but once you get to four or five or something like that, um, and I think one of those people should be Jordan, um, I, we can do that literally like within the next hour, um, if we wanted to, and if there were four or five people that, that were up for it. And, and I'm willing to help. I've done that before willing to do it again, love doing that kind of stuff. So, so then I think 
that's a you know that that's a transitioning from one person owning to four or five people owning it on behalf of the commons one person owning it on behalf of the commons four or five people owning it together none of those owning all of it each of them owning a part of it socially so I, and, then, I, and then from there you know you start moving into what problems uh that that brings up a bunch of problems right who pays for it uh you know who's going to whose credit card is on the line and could get auto charged the next year right and things like that and how do you intermediate those discussions and um you know how do you how do you how do you understand how do you rec uh how do you record who owns what and how much um how do you add the next person in how do you add you know what what happens if you bump into something else that you need to co-own with another group that's like that that's another four or five people all of those kinds of questions are generative right and then the next level up is probably something that starts to look more like a, a formal DAO rather than just an informal collective of, of four people that said yeah i'll, I'll co-own the thing um charles and i'd love to pass the mic to lauren who appears to be freed of her slime adventure oh perfect um <clears throat> Free slime comment, just um, maybe the bridge in between, or the the first the, the the piece that you didn't list in your in your wonderful list there, Pete, was um, the wallet. You know, the shared wallet. So there's this um, idea of a multi-sig wallet, or there's different things that are still um, not specifically or necessarily on the blockchain, but then you know normally DAOs are on the blockchain. But Lauren, uh, good time. And we don't have to start there. You can start before you have a multi-sig wallet. Well, in terms of that, that piece about the, the costs and then the credit card and whatever, there's this idea of a, of a, a co-owned yeah. wallet. So, yeah. Over to you in the honeycomb, Lauren. Oh, what am I commenting on? Anything at all you'd like, like uh, the, any anywhere the big takeover. From, anywhere from <laughs> check-in to re reactions to where this is heading to uh, whatever. I don't have any strong opinions at the moment. I'm just glad to be here. Um, yeah, I mean, one thing I think that um, uh, we've been developing at Kikolab that's important is um, kind of a, the idea of a framework of um, hash bins and that in a hash verse, and that is these um, just containers, which is not a, uh, necessarily related to any tech, but can be done with Trove and um, massive wiki, whatever technology we like. Um, but they're basically just ways of attaching uh, resources to ideas. Um, and I think that that will give us a really uh, powerful framework moving forward that's more fun and can attract um, attention and be fun and which is sometimes missing from the commons and <laughs> um and i also feel like you know we've had talks on this before going back to to joe um Cornelli and um talking about it and christina bowens too uh, advising me to um make sure that the what's most important mapping of resources is uh, resources that actually mean something. So that's why we're um, doing this grant writing quest. And I think that um, one really important asset is, uh, you know, um, cash and where the pools of cash are and working together to try to get some of those. Um, although I know everyone, not everyone here likes grants, but um, I think that it's it's a it's something that attracts other people. So, um, plotting out where the funding is and working together um, to get some of the funding, I think, would be a uh, a good goal for us. That's it. Thanks. And I was going to add, Pete, just relative to what you were just saying about we could move there pretty quickly. Um, from my perspective, until we've had like six calls and realize who the people are who showed up for the six calls. It seems really premature to say four people are going to step forward and decide to actually be there for a lo for the long haul for this thing and that they makes will sign sense. up right now. Makes sense. Yeah, um, I agree with that. I think uh, makes sense. And, and I hear that. And also, I, rec I, I want to suggest that we have a problem. Uh, 
we have an information structure problem, uh, IT infrastructure problem right now. Which um, one? Where's Where's the wiki? And where's the website? What do you mean, where's? Uh, does Generative Commons have a website? Right now, um, there's a domain, and if we if we build if we built the same thing we just did who for owns the open domain? Online, so why does it matter if the intent of the domain is to donate it to whatever entity shows up as soon as it shows up? Why is that an, even an issue right now? Because we showed up. <laughs> no, I mean, there's no entity to pour, pour it into. Perfectly happy to shift ownership the moment that's needed. Why is that I'm, a dilemma I'm, right now? I'm, I'm personally, I am more, uh, more incentivized or more aligned. I'm more aligned with a domain that's held by four people than one person. And it will be the moment we have a thing to do the that. The moment with. could literally be like we don't minutes. know who the four people are, Pete. So I volunteer. <laughs> yeah, I volunteer. I mean, you know, Which, and and also there. And you said something about showing up there, but we're there now, and we didn't even define if this is like a weekly call or the, the right obvious. exactly. So, so, but you also said again, we bought. But it's not we. It's no, no, no. I was saying we because I was trying to sort of say we the crowd. I bought it. I, I went it. and got the domain. I get the intent. You I personally intent don't. I personally don't mind, Terry, that you bought the domain name. I also think if we're gonna get serious enough to buy a domain name, that Jerry bought it knowing that we might change the name and then we'll buy another one. I, I really don't think it's a. I think it's a non-issue. I think in our last few minutes, we should focus on something a bit more substantive in terms of action items. And, and I trust that Jerry will do the right thing. I love the generative oh. flavor of the call, but I have to hop to a different one. So yeah, you have to host, Judy. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Judy. Um, and I'm happy to follow your lead and just transfer the domain immediately. I'm, I'm, it, I'm not gonna like drop on that sword. I just don't see why spend energy on that right this second when we have like 50 things to actually stand up something that'll look like generative commons. I agree with Vincent and I also agree with Pete, you know, if it's, if it's like an hour's worth of, I mean, it's not even, anyway, if it's a simple and easy enough thing, then it's not like getting stuck on this. That also includes then me figuring out how to fold a, a bucket uh, email into my email so that I get those and reply. I mean, there's, there's like a series of other implications of the simple task that complicate our lives right now instead of simplifying our lives right now. So, uh, Lauren, please. I'm down for it. Uh, I have a pretty strong opinion um, that um, it's going to go much better if we can get a very small team to go in and move fast and do things instead of having a great big group of people do social negotiation for two years to um, have like tons of talks and very little uh, outcome um, because I feel like small groups can just forge ahead, get stuff done, and then gather some momentum that other that will attract other people. It's just, um, it seems to be the way. Sounds good. Thank you. Um, other thoughts? Do we want to replicate this call next week? Turquoise is Maybe good. Michael's good. On the um, channel, we can also discuss that asynchronous. Sounds good, but why don't I just duplicate the invite into next week and then we can move it or do whatever, but let's let's have an assumption that there's a, another call like this next week. Uh, that seems like a good starting point. Um, a bunch of people had to leave and we've gone 90 minutes. It feels like we've gotten somewhere. Um, and uh, so why don't we get ourselves all on the same chat channel on Mattermost? Um, We'll figure this out. We'll be recording the calls and posting them online as, as per usual, as per our usual generative commons MO. Uh, and Consider then, how we can pump up and take that opportunity of, of the, the summit at Kiko Lab as well. We can frame that, we can co-design in any ways. And, and as I said, the last words I just said, I'm like, oh, there's another petal on the flower, which is um, what are the assumptions for when you're doing something in the spirit of the generative commons? And the assumptions might be that your notes and transcripts are open, that you record and post the video, except that has privacy implications, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I think there's a pedal here about what, 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 are, what is sort of the normal working order? And that includes what does it mean to feed the commons? Like when do you know you've actually 
added to the generative commons? Like, like this posting to YouTube good enough? Does it need to be someplace else? And I don't think we need to solve the internet archive problem of, you know, how will this be available a thousand years from now? But we do have to think about those kinds of issues as well. Bless you, Vincent. Um, cool, any, any last thoughts? Um, thanks everybody for coming. Thanks, Jerry, for, for hosting us. Um, okay, it's been a, a wonderful call. Benjamin Turquoise, yes. lovely to meet you. Thank you for coming. Yay. And systems innovators later today, um, one o'clock Pacific, four o'clock Eastern. I will be there. I got to hop to an integral thing and then integral leadership, then I'll be in the systems thing with you. All right. Do you mean your health being integral, Turquoise? or, or like Oh, yeah, integral to the whole thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go get some health stuff and then integral leadership room <laughs> on these spaces, I think, something like that. Um, yes, and, and my health is integral to the whole project, y'all. So that it is. This week. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, and, so. and the chat will appear somewhere, maybe in the I channel. Will. I will copy that. that to us. Yes, that would be beautiful. Thanks yep. so much. And I have a, a cool mind map I'll post as well. Yay! Awesome. Yay! Thanks. Awesome. And we're all.